Okay, we're going to have a little look at the Tesla app now. So we're looking at it on the customer's iPad. So depending on where you're looking at it, it might look slightly different, but uh, the, main, the main crux of it will be the same. So firstly, this is like the main kind of live view of the app. So we can see here that we're on, we're on the day view. You can see right at the top, we've got today and we've got day and we've discharged 8.9 kilowatt hours and we've charged with 20.2 kilowatt hours. So that's just for today. And we can move that to say a month. And then we can see we've discharged 258.3 kilowatt hours and we've charged with 276.7 if I can put my teeth in. So that, that then starts to show us all the different bits of information depending on what the time date stamp is. With all these apps, this is how everyone looks at their system. They don't come out here every morning just to look at, you know, if the battery's still stuck to the wall. They look at all of their apps. So it's important that the system has a decent app and it's able to show you what's happening in the system. So let's have a little look at what this app is showing us now. So we're on, we'll stick with the day, with the day tab. So you can see we've got this graph uh, just below the total discharge and the total charge figures. So above the line we've got discharge so it's discharged into the house or back to the grid and then below the line is charging so if it's charging from the grid or from solar so let's have a little look so we can see here on the left hand side of the grid we've got a gray colored uh, part of the graph and that's a grid charge and we can see that if we scroll down just here where it says not percent grid or charge from uh, 47 percent grid so you can see 9.3 kilowatt hours has come from the grid and that is during that initial morning period. So that is the low tariff period um, on a morning that the battery is charged up from. We've then got a discharge in blue. So that's above the line. And that's then showing that the battery is then discharging into the house to cover that morning load. The air source heat pumps probably come on to heat the house up. And so now the battery is doing its thing, discharging into the house and making sure that there's no grid purchase during that period. So there we go, so 100% from the home. So used by 100% from the home, 8.9 kilowatt hours. So that is that early morning period where the battery is discharging into the property. We've then got the uh, solar PV has started to charge the system. And that's because the sun's come out and we can see this yellow bit of the graph here. So that solar is now powering the house and it's starting to charge the batteries up as well. So we can see there that it's charging, it's charged from 54% from the solar. So the key thing here is this is effectively, these two top bottom tables are effectively splitting up uh, how the uh, system has been used, where the power's gone in terms of its usage, but also what has charged the battery up. So if we start from used by, 100% of the home's consumption has come from the battery. So the, the house hasn't bought any power that isn't during like a low that isn't during a low tariff period. It's all come from the battery. So 8.9 kilowatt hours has been supplied by the battery and 0% has come from the grid. However, the battery has been charged by the solar 54%, so 11.2 uh, kilowatt hours and 46% has come from the grid. So that, and then we can see that on the table. So if we change this to month, we would then be able to see how this is, how this is kind of transpiring over a longer time period. So we've got a graph here that's shown a little bit differently, but you can see discharge is above the line, which is in blue, and uh, charge is below the line in the grey, which is from the grid, and yellow from the solar. So used by, we've got 99% of the home has been powered from the battery, so 258.1 kilowatt hours, and 1% has come from the grid, which is really good over a month's period. And then uh, charged from, 66% of the battery's charging has come from the solar PV, and 34% has come from the grid. And that is the, the gray part of that top graph. You could carry that on as well. You could have a look at a longer distance, a longer time period, a year, and actually see how it's been working over the year. And that's, that's when people look at, okay, well, actually I've got the ability probably to add another battery uh, to it, another module. And with the new expansion packs from Tesla, it means that you don't have to add inverter capacity, which involves the DNO and all of that. You can just add another battery pack, which makes things a lot easier. So if we go back to the effectively the, the home screen, we can see that for the month of March, an overview of the total of the property in total. So the energy for the property, 40% has come from the battery, 33% has come from the solar, and 27% has come from the grid. And that 27% includes that, um, that, that cheap tariff window. So then they can start to see how much energy they've used, which is 643.7 kilowatt hours, 
but obviously uh, that is just the usage of the property it's not what they bought in so they bought in 171.1 kilo hours but we know from the other graph that basically all of that has come from the grid during a low tariff window so they're paying next to nothing for that power if we have a look at the generation so now we're looking at just the solar PV. In the month of March, we might as well keep it as that. We've got 449.2 kilowatt hours, so nearly 450 kilowatt hours of generation just in um, in March so far. And we're only on the 11th today, so we've still got pretty much the full half of the year to go. We've got that solar PV was used 47% by the home directly. So basically, solar generated passes through the Tesla inverter straight into the property without touching the battery modules, which is the most efficient way for it to, to be used. 41% has gone into the power wall itself to be stored and used later on, and 12% has been exported back to the grid. Um, so 50.6 kilowatt hours has gone back to the grid, which the customer's paid for, has been paid for because they've got the smart export guarantee. If we then look at what has actually been imported and what has actually been exported for the month of March, so again, you've got this graph here, which we've got above the line, which is the blue, which is the home's usage, and the green, which is the um, imported power that's gone into the Tesla, which is, which is slightly unique. I've not seen many apps that actually split that out, which is really good. So we can see that for, the, for March, we've got 64% has been sent straight into the property, which is probably over a, a low tariff period, which is 171.1 kilowatt hours, which matches the, the, the figure in the last um, screen. And 36% has gone into the power wall, directly charging the power wall from the grid. Exported from, so we've got uh, 0% has gone directly from the power wall to the grid. So there's not been any forced export, which you can do if you want. And 100% of the exported power that's gone back to the grid has, got, has basically been sent back to the grid from the solar so we've got 50.6 kilowatt hours gone back to the grid like i said which has which has been customers been paid for and that's the tesla app really so the the best one that i quite like is this one here this is like the the main screen of the app really and this shows what's been produced in real time and where the power's going so we've got 4.6 on the roof so we're generating at the minute and it's absolutely freezing you might be able to see me shaking a bit it's 4.6 kilowatts uh, coming down from the roof that's going into the two power walls so we've got 2.1 uh, kilowatts going out or 2.4 now going out to the um out into the house there's zero kilowatts going coming in or going to the grid so we're supplying the house with 2.4 kilowatts and therefore we must be uh, charging the batteries with the remaining amount of power yeah and it just this basically gives you like a, a real-time view of what's happening in the property so impact, so this basically shows all the information that we've just been through in, in different ways. So you, you can kind of find what is your preferred uh, way of looking at all this. So we, this is on the week view at the minute. So let's just go to month just because that's what we were looking at before. So we can see self-powered, we were 73% self-powered. So 33% from the solar, 40% from the, from the power wall and 27% from the grid, which again is probably the low tariff period. We've got that time of use. So we can start, we can start to see when that, when that energy was used estimated value, solar offset. So we can see that the solar has generated nearly 450 kilowatt hours and the home has used 643. There's just loads of things you can you can buzz through here and it depends on what the timestamp is as, as well that you're working on. So today, for example, the home has been 54% self-powered. So 46% has come from the grid, like I say, probably on the low tariff period. The solar has generated uh, 45%. The power wall has, has used 33% and the grid has supplied 22%. Then we've got four pounds from today, estimate based on the flux tariff, which the customer's on. So the solar's generated 23.4 kilowatt hours today and the home has consumed 37.3 kilowatt hours today. It's a very cold day, so that, that'll probably be pre predominantly the heat pump. You can access support and you can change settings through, which I'm not going to go into uh, on this because that's it's more, I'm, more, I'm more interested looking at the actual app in terms of what you can see as, a, as an end user so we've got the solar generation the power wall there it shows you how many power walls and it's showing what it's doing um, and it's discharging currently 1.7 kilowatts into the property and uh, yeah it's looking pretty good and that's just jumps back to the part of the app that we were on before so yeah that's the tesla power wall app
Okay, now let's have a look at the Anderson EV Chargers app. Now, this is the first time we've ever had anything to do with the Anderson EV Charger, so we're very excited to do it, but this is the first time I'm looking at the app, so bear with me. So this is the Anderson EV Charger app, and we've got a nice big picture of the EV Charger there, showing that the vehicle is not requesting charge at the minute. So if we have a little look at that, uh, vehicle not requesting charge, the charge point is ready to go, but the vehicle isn't requesting anything. So the vehicle's charged, doesn't need any power or the schedule in the car, which the customer schedules his charge through the Tesla rather than through the Anderson. I'll show you where you can do that in here if you want to do it the other way around. But basically the car doesn't want any charge. So the, the charger is basically sat there ready to go. So if we have a look, last charging session was today at 2.46 in the morning and it only added 1.9 kilowatt hours, which is about um, 9.5 miles. So um, the customer doesn't do huge amounts of mileage, so um, it's basically topped the car up a little bit. And that lasted 31 minutes at a cost of about 27 pence. So we can lock the charge point here. We often get a lot of people asking about how to protect other people from kind of just pulling up and charging. Now, it's a quite an interesting question because it would take someone very, very brazen to come and park on your driveway and sit it there for three hours to get any sort of decent amount of, of energy. This, this was sat here for half an hour and it only cost 27p and it only added 9.5 miles to it. So you can imagine someone rolling up and hoping that you don't come back for three or four hours. So I don't think it's a huge issue really, but uh, you can lock it if it is an issue that you, that you want to protect against. So if we have a little look at the graph, so this this here basically shows um, for the week, or let's do the month again. So here we go. So the overview, so it's charged for just over two hours, so two, two hours, seven minutes, uh, 9.3 kilowatt hours, and it costs about £1.33. So that's the overview. And then it's got kind of each charging session or each um, each week within that, that that it's been working for. So let's have a look at February. So February, it charged for just under eight hours, 44 kilowatt hours from the grid that it charged with, and it costs £7.24 in total. So for that full month, it costs about £7.24 20, to run this car for February, which is, which is next to nothing. So if we move along, we'll have a little look at the schedules. So you can um, set add schedule, and from this, you can basically name the schedule and then set uh, the time that it starts until the time that it finishes and select when that kicks in like I say the customer does all of this from the car itself so isn't isn't worried about setting the charging schedules on this um, because they've got a tesla power wall it means that they only have to open the tesla app and they can do both the power wall and the car from that app so it makes it a bit easier but equally if you want to do it from the anderson it'll work in exactly the same way so if we have a little look, you can export all this data. So we often get a lot of customers that want to um, uh, put this data onto their own spreadsheets and what have you. You can export all of that from the app and then allows you to input that data. And there we go. There's not a huge amount to show you on the app for the Anderson, but it just shows you that you can see um, when the last charging session was, the amount of energy that was delivered and the amount of miles, which is a really nice little feature. You can see how many miles that's actually equated to the length of time and the cost that that, that, that cost you as a, as a customer for that energy. You can see the charging sessions in a bit more detail and the overviews for the month or the year. So if we have a look at the year, we can install this in January, so that's that works about right. So totally for this full year, they've done just under 11 hours of charging. That's delivered just short of 60 kilowatt hours, so 59.5 kilowatt hours and it's cost £10.14. So this car has cost £10.14 to run for this year. Um, so it's not bad, really. And then it breaks that down into January, February, and March, of course. So yeah, that's the Anderson app. Not a huge amount to show you, but um, hopefully gives you an insight if you are looking at getting the Anderson as your EV charger, which I really do rate it. There we go. Another project all wrapped up. Thank you very much for joining us on another YouTube video. It means the absolute world that you keep coming back and you keep watching what we're doing. Hopefully you can see that we still prioritise quality all these years on since we started YouTube. We still prioritise customer service and we want to deliver the best installations of, with the best products all the way around the country. We work nationwide. So if you've got an installation where you want us to come in 
and do it properly, support you throughout the life of that install, then please get in touch. The contact details for the company will be in the comments below. But thanks again for coming back and watching another one of our videos. If you've got any questions about this install or want to raise anything that you've seen, then drop it in the comments and I'll come back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks very much and we'll see you on the next one.